Hello friends, welcome to today's operating system class and in this class we will see the communication in client server system. And this is the very simple architecture of a client server system. Here we are having more number of clients, all the clients will be connected to the server through internet and all the services will be there in the server system. First, the client will give request to the server for any particular service request to the server and the server will provide that particular service to the client in the form of response response okay so this is the very simple architecture how this communication will be taken place here we are going to see the socket communication and rpc communication and pipe rpc is nothing but remote procedure call Okay, let us see all these things one by one. The first one is communication using sockets. Uh, first, uh, let us see what is socket. Socket is nothing but the end point for communication between two processes. One process is in client and another process is in server. Okay, this is the simple client server architecture for this socket communication. Here, the socket is defined by IP address concatenated with the port number see up to this is IP address and this one is port number port number ok and when come to the server system this is IP address and this is port number when come to port number 1024 port numbers are defined for some special purpose and those are called as well known port numbers that is 0 to 1023 port numbers are reserved port numbers ok here 23 is reserved for telnet and 21 is reserved for FTP that is file transfer protocol and 80 is reserved for web server or HTTP ok. So if we use any browser then we are using this 80 port number that is for web server ok here the server receives clients request this is the server system the server should receive the request from the client by specified port by specified port so normally the client can use browser browser hence HTTP protocol is being used and port 80 is reserved for this ok and once the request is received from the client then the server will accept that request and the connection from the client socket will be established ok next the server implement the specific services through the through this particular socket ok which may be either through telnet or through file transfer protocol or through the HTTP hypertext transfer protocol ok and listen to this well known ports ok. So, the server will receive the request only through well known ports only through well known ports that is normally the browser. So, client have to use the browser or FTP or telnet for establishing the connections and it will give this request only through that connections. Okay, that is the socket connection. Let us see one example for this. In this diagram we are having two systems. First one is host X. Host X. Um, the IP address for host X is 146.86.5.20 and this host X wanted to connect with the web server which IP address is this one that is 161.25.19.8. Ok and the port number for this host X is 16.25 and for web server this is reserved for 80 because this is the web server this is the web server hence 80 is reserved for this web server ok now the connection will consist of pair of sockets which are the pair of sockets this is the socket 1 and this is socket 2 that is client socket and this is server socket and from these two sockets connection will be established and the packets will be traveled between these connection ok 
the packets are traveling between host are delivered to appropriate process based on the destination port number okay so 1625 is assigned for host x the port number is assigned for host x and 80 is assigned for the web server here all the connections must be unique must be unique that is we have to assign a different port number for all the connections suppose if the host y which is wanted to connect with the server that is the web server then we have to assign different port number to this particular um, host that is host y other than 0 to 1023 okay so and we have we should not assign this uh, 1625 here again because all the port are unique and this ensures all connections consist of unique pair of sockets this is important the second one is remote procedure call uh, which is another important and very powerful technique for communicating client and server systems okay and this is also known as function call or subroutine call okay why it is called as function call or subroutine call for example this is our main program it may be void main okay in our main program we are having some function called student details student details that may be start here to here and some programs are also here see if we call this student detail in between this main program then this is the local procedure call not the remote procedure call because the student detail function is available within the program itself within the system itself okay but when come to remote procedure call this function is available in some other system okay and we have try to call that particular function from the client system okay so this is the function call that is the procedure call we, we have to call this procedure p with the parameter xyz with the parameter xyz then the server system will receive this particular request and it will return the uh, return value p to the client okay return to this procedure result that is the return value to this client okay here when a program causes a procedure to execute in different address space different address space means the procedure is available in the server system not in the client system okay but we have to code to call the procedure as a local procedure call without the details of re remote interaction we simply call this particular procedure here the programmer have to write the same code whether the subroutine is local to this particular program to executing or the subroutine may be available in the remote program okay this is important okay so this form of client server interaction implemented via request and response message passing system okay here we are passing only the messages between the client and the server the server will receive the message in the form of procedure call and the client will receive the message in the form of result of this procedure. Here, uh, through this remote procedure call, the client and server systems will be connected between each other. Okay, So, RPC protocol is available in the both end. Here, this is the client system. Client system and this is server server system in this architecture five components are involved to sending message from the client to server client to server here we are having the first one is client this is the client okay client and client stub client stub is here and rpc protocol which is used to, to connect between the client and system and second next one is server stub and the last one is server server is here okay so to sending the message from client to server 
to sending the message from client to server five components are involved and now let us see how the communication will be taken between the client system and the server system client system and server system as per this remote procedure call first the client sends the message to the client tab see this is the client client send the message to client tab and the client tab packs the message that is message with the parameters message with the parameter that is the function parameter or procedure parameters then this is called as marshalling and that will be sent to the remote procedure call so what is the duty of client tab client tab will pack the message with the parameter okay and that packed message sends to the remote procedure call protocol rpc protocol and step 3 is the rpc protocol sends the packed message to rpc protocol of server see rpc protocol will transfer this message to the protocol of server system okay here and that will be given to server tab the server tab unpacks the message that is message plus parameter the server the server tab will unpack the message and parameter and that argument list will be given to the server program next the server processes the message via several functions or subroutines and sends back to the server tab okay again the value will be returned to the server tab here the server tab again packs the message that is the return value with the message okay plus message so this is called as marshalling again okay and that message packed message will be given to rpc protocol next the server rpc protocol sends the packed message to the client rpc protocol now the connection will comes like this right and then the message is received by the client tab client tab and the client tab will demarshalling the message with the return value and this return value will be given to client system okay the third type of client server communication is by using pipes let us see first the ordinary pipes ordinary pipes allows two process can communicate to each other the standard format is producer and consumer fashion okay producer will stay in one end this is producer and this is consumer Okay, here the producer writes to one end of the pipe. Okay, this is called as write end, write end, and the consumer reads from other end of this pipe. So this end, this is called as read end, read end. Here, the ordinary pipes are unidirectional. Okay, only one way communication is possible in this ordinary pipes. in unix operating system the pipe is a technique for passing information from one program's process to another process okay here the pipe is used to pass the parameters such as the output of one process to be the input of another process okay so this is process 1 this is p1 the output of p1 this is the output will be given to input of another process for example p2 okay so the system temporarily holds this piped information that is the temporary result result of p1 p1 result until it reads by the receiving process okay so the the output will be wait until p2 is ready to read this particular output okay so for this we have to use this pipe to hold the temporary result or the output of p1 
So, any pipe can access by using the read and write system calls. Here, the pipe of int fd which is nothing but to create the pipe that accessed through this particular file descriptor. Okay, fd is the file descriptor of type integer. fd means file descriptor. And fd of 0 that is file descriptor 0, fd of 0 is read end of the pipe. Okay, so this is read end. Read end of the pipe and f1, this is f1 that is in the write end. Okay. Suppose if we want to read anything, we have to use only this read n. That is all fd of 0 will access only in the read n and all fd of 1 will access only in the write n. Suppose if we want two way communication, the two way communication require two pipes, two different pipes. Okay. So, this is this pipe is for one direction, this is right end and this is read end, read end, this is parent process and child process, okay. Suppose if we want to use this as read and this as write, then we have to use another pipe, okay, pipe 2 should be used here, we cannot read, that is we cannot write in this end and we cannot read in this end because this is now right end. We can write only this end and reading will be taken place only this particular end hence this is called as read end. So here it is right end and this is read end when come to pipe 2 and this is right uh, sorry read end and this is right end ok. So one pipe can use to for only one communication. If you want two way communication then we have to use two different pipes, pipe 1 and pipe 2 and only one limitation in the pipe for this interprocess communication is that the process used pipes must have common parent process. This is the only limitation in this pipe communication. Up to this we have seen the communication in client server systems. And there are three types, first one is socket communication and second one is RPC that is remote procedure call and third one is pipes. So by using these three methods, the client server system will be communicated to each other. Now this is the question time and what is the marshalling and demarshalling in RPC, okay. Students please write your answer in the comment box. And in the next class, we will see another important topic from second unit. Thank you.